Enter the Sofa Button X1, the heavyweight of Universal Remotes. This is the upgrade to the U2 Universal Remote that we took a look at a few months ago on the channel. And to be honest, it's been a solid remote that's still in use today. It's connected to this TV and a few other devices here. The X1 is next level though in my opinion. This is the premium option. It does cost a fair bit more though. Currently priced at $229.99 on Amazon at the time of recording. I can find it for $206 in some instances, but they only have one review. To be honest, I did expect it to be around $170 or £180, so it does seem a little on the steep side. I hear it's on sale quite often, so keep an eye out for that. Also, it's obviously not for everybody, as we have a mixed bag of reviews with a mixture of 1 to 5 star ratings. We've got an average of 3.4 stars, out of 27 ratings so let's take a look for ourselves and see if it's any good the packaging feels premium and we're greeted with a nice clear instruction guide the remote itself looks very sleek and stylish it feels really nice in the hand, very well made. All of the keys are backlit and the materials used here are polycarbonate plastic. It means it's basically scratch and drop resistant. There's a USB-C port on the bottom for charging the remote. It has a 1050 milliamp hour battery, but we'll get to the specs later. The screen is also a PMMA plastic, which means it's shatter resistant. Also included in the box is the USB travel charger two infrared sensors with a 3.5mm headphone jack and an infrared sensor on one, the other one has two. Then we get two micro USB-C leads, one for charging the remote and one for the controller hub. This is an absolute fingerprint magnet. I see why that's wrapped up. Look at that already. The hub itself is futuristic and smart. We've got a LED light on the front that shows us when we're connected. On the rear, we've got the power button, the USB-C port, and the two 3.5 jacks for the infrared sensors that go elsewhere. Now, this is everything that's included in the box. The setup process is really easy. You just wanna scan the QR code or search for the Sofa Button app in the Google and iOS stores. Then we wanna select the X1 and select Setup New Hub. It tells us to hold the button for three seconds until the blue light blinks. And then when it does, we'll get a prompt to connect to our Wi-Fi. Enter your Wi-Fi credentials. This blue light will turn green. Simple as that, you are fully connected to the hub. Now we're gonna go with placement. So I'm gonna move the hub over towards my TV. This hub has got 360 degrees infrared sensors inside. And it's also got the two wired infrared sensors as well. So if you do struggle with signal on any of your devices, you can plug one or both of those infrared leads in and place them discreetly. I'm gonna try and connect my PlayStation and my Xbox to this, but just to quickly show you, one of my infrared placements has to go behind my monitor. It's because the TV I'm trying to control is directly above them and the infrared sensor on the TV is hidden up the back there. So I needed one of the sensors within line of sight. All the other devices seem to work fine though. We can add remotes easily. I'm not gonna turn this into a tutorial, but to copy a remote, all you do is press the learn button for each key, and then you hold that key down for five seconds, around five centimeters away from the hub until it successfully registers. It will tell you when it's successful or if it fails. Alternatively, you can search for the brand and the model number for your device. Once you've found the code, you wanna copy the code to the remote, the application will do this automatically for you. You can then name and icon your device. There are ways to connect via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, but with Bluetooth, you need to be able to access the settings on the other device to accept the pairing mode. Let's test this out on a few of my devices, then I'm gonna start with this Sony TV. But yeah, the power on and the power off seems to be working fine. The arrows up and down seem to be working fine. Left and right seem to be working fine. And then... Our back button works. Our home button works. Quite responsive as well. It's actually really quick. Our mute button works. Uh, channel change works, the volume up and down work, so yeah that, that's pretty much a win, that's every button on this remote almost, 
and then the LG TV so we want the power on that all works fine and then we'll go again with the arrow keys make sure all these work and if any of the buttons don't work guys you can still go into the application and you can set custom commands so you can actually customize a command if there is one or two that are just not working you can customize these as you see fit yeah all of the arrow keys and stuff seem to be working the volume works the mute button works up and down Check that our home button work, our menu, yep, and then back, come around to the fan, and then we want to select and we want to turn the power on, yep. Okay, so now this is all you need to do, you need to remember what buttons you set, because if I show you this remote it's only got five basic options and these options are completely different to what's on this remote but i do want this remote to still control that so i've set the power button as as you just saw then on and off i've set this okay button as the oscillating feature yeah that's working as well and then i think i set the options for the mode, yes. And then I think it was up to change the speed. Yes, one, two, and three. Awesome, so it all works with the fan. To the projector now then. Takes a second to come on. Up, down, left and right, works fine. Okay, works fine. Volume up, volume down, mute, and the menu, home. And then back to the main home. Yes, everything works awesome. So now I want to try and connect my PlayStation or my Xbox. So I'm going to press add new device. With the Wi-Fi, it only supports Roku and Sonos and Philips Hue. So we're going to go on to the Bluetooth method. Select Sony PS4 slash PS5. I'm going to change the icon to a controller or something. Press complete. This should install the code now to the remote control. While that installs, we now need to go onto the console and accept Bluetooth pairing. So if you come into your settings on PlayStation, click on devices, scroll down to the Bluetooth tab, and then you'll see all of your DualShock controllers and any headsets that you might have already connected. It'll take a few minutes for the sofa button X1 to show up here, but as soon as it does, click add sofa button X1, and then you should see a little green icon in the corner. This shows that we are actively connected to the remote. And no way, this is actually working guys, I can't believe this. This remote even controls the old PlayStation 4. It is limited in its terms of functionality. In theory, we could program this as an activity, so when you come and turn on the TV, the PlayStation would turn on along with it. Unfortunately, we couldn't get it connected to the Xbox One. I did try everything, I just couldn't get it to pair up with the Xbox. Other than not being able to connect to my Xbox and my key light, I haven't found any other issues with this remote at all. Another awesome feature is if you find a code that doesn't exist in the database, you can share that with other people so they can then copy. If you misplace your remote, you can select the Find My Remote and this will set an alarm off, it'll start to beep. I seem to have misplaced my remote, I can't find it. How did it get down there? Awesome. 
The X1 is also fully backlit so it can be used in complete darkness whereas the U2 just has a lit screen. I'll go through a few of the comparisons as well. The X1 is charged via USB-C, it has a 1050 milliamp hour battery whereas the U2 only has two AA batteries that either need to be changed or recharged. The X1 we just charge it via USB-C, it takes a couple of hours to charge and Sofabatten claims it can last up to two months. I've tested it for a couple of weeks now and it was only on one bar when I got it so it's lasted a couple of weeks with one bar so I would imagine a few months is accurate. The LED display is also better on the X1. The text is a basic font but it's a nice font, it's clear and compared to the U2, the X1 is just far better in my opinion. The X1 is also slimmer, thinner and shorter so it feels better in the hand, especially with the premium quality materials that it's built with. I would much prefer to have this singular remote than loads of random remotes scattered all around my room. It looks really nice and modern, compatible with so many brands and different devices. I think it's 6,000 brands and over 50,000 devices. I'll leave links down in the description. The link is an affiliate link, so I will receive a small percentage of any sales that link generates. But I'm not linked to or sponsored by SofaBatten in any way. This is my personal and honest opinion. We can recommend the X1 remote. Guys, if you found any part of this video helpful or informative at all, please consider leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, your notifications on, that way you never miss any future uploads. You can also give us a super thanks now if you want to support us that way. They will be much appreciated and everything will go straight back in towards the channel. Guys, thanks to each and every one of you for watching and being here today. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. I'm Craig, this is Really Random Reviews, and I'll see you in my next video.